And as you rejoin us, the leaders are about to be swept up by the field. There is the junction being made. It's Tunis, who is the first rider across, and the whole pack is once again together again. And now the attacks will come thick and fast on this last 28 kilometres to the finish. We're looking down here. You can see the space the riders managed to make for themselves between their bikes, despite the 200-strong bunch. But of course, when they start to fan out and change directions when people attack, that is when the riders start to touch wheels. And in fact, if you were down there in the bunch, the, the smell of burning rubber occasionally when the tires start to rub together can be quite strong. The danger is always there, of course, of crashes. Remember yesterday in the finish, we had one of the Brianzoli riders go down, Giovanni Batoya. He fell down, amazingly enough, by himself in that big sprint of 190 riders but it certainly spoils the run for the finish of Sean Kelly. Always danger. And now we're back with the leaders again. Adrie van der Poel on the far right here in the colours of the new Dutch champion. Dominique Gard is in this breakaway. Well, not really a breakaway at the minute, but more the head of the bunch. There's van der Poel. 153 is Theo de Roy. Number five about to come into our picture. That's Dominique Gard. And Ludo Peters on the far side there in that green jersey. These men, very, very well-renowned for their ability as strong workhorses to keep paces high. Ludo Peters in that lime-coloured jersey. Here we are down on the ground with them now. And it looks uh, as though Adri has decided to... Say, no, he's not. He's throwing it all away. I was going to say, have his last meal of the day. He's been in the saddle now for 6 hours and 40 minutes. I thought he might be feeling a bit peckish, Richard. But he's throwing it all out to feed the bird. Lightens his pockets. Oh dear me, and somebody's gone into the ditch here. Now that is what happens in the big bunch. This is one of the Roland Scala boys. And it is in fact one of their top riders, Rudy Patry, one of the sprinters has gone down in the ditch. Now Paul, once the echelons form in the crosswind, the man on the inside might suddenly be pushed in that ditch. That's the most dangerous place to be in actually. When the wind's coming from the right hand side, everybody's scrambling down the left to try and get the last little bit of uh, a shelter. And all of a sudden, the rider in the front might make a small, small move to the left, and this waves back down the, uh, back down the echelon, as they call it. And uh, if your re reactions aren't too good, when you get to the, when the wave gets to the back, you can find yourself flicked off the road and into one of these gutters. Well, life in that main field really is uh, a very dangerous occupation indeed. But it looks as though Patry was all right. Thankfully, he narrowly missed that uh, nasty strip of barbed wire fencing there. He'll be back on his bike now and out of the bunch for the rest of the day. Adri van der Poel. And just look at that packet. You can see why the riders on the outside <laughs> run the risk of being flipped into the ditch, uh, sometimes by accident or some, and sometimes, I think, by, by intent. Well, not really so much by intent. It's more by accident. A lot of the riders are trying to get up to the front uh, especially at this late stage in the game. They're, trying, they're taking all the risks that they can. They're moving down the outside. To some, 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 riders, some riders are even trying to get into the, uh, into the grass and move up that way. It's very, very dangerous to, uh, to take these risks, but you, only, you can only win by taking risks, and one of the ideas is to get to the front as uh, whichever way possible. <laughs> There's the official gap there, edging away, only a couple of seconds at a time, but that's what counts at the minute, 24 seconds, the official gap. Does it have a chance? I think it has a reasonable chance here, because all the teams that up until now have been doing a lot of chasing are represented in this group. You've got uh, Ludo Peters from the Super Confex, his team is one of the teams who've been uh, doing a lot of the chasing up until now in the tour, and they'll give Ludo Peters a lot of, uh, a lot of rope, because they, uh, they know he's a serious rider, they know he's very, very intelligent, and he also won a stage in the Tour de France last year from a, a sprint uh, from a small group like this. We've got uh, Van der Poel from PDM, and there's another good, strong Dutch team, so they won't be helping with the chasing. And the Panasonics, who were driving the bunch long before, are represented by Theo de Roy. So it's difficult now to know who will actually take up the ropes. And we'll probably find it be somebody like Stephen Roach's team, or either the Roland team, who've got a very good sprinter in, uh, in Capio. Well, unlike yesterday at this stage of the race, they are in very narrow lanes, which continually twist. There's the yellow service vehicle being called in behind them. That's always a pleasing sight. It means they have over 30 seconds lead, and indeed they now have 44 seconds. So they will know that they are now over 30 seconds ahead. And quite clearly, all five of them willing to work together here. 
and to try and get rid of the common enemy, the main field, before they start fighting out the finish between themselves. Not a lot of wind today, it is quite a hot day. There's a slight cross breeze, but it really... Oh, and there's another crash here. This one has happened in the lanes, and obviously the roads now... Look at this, the whole field running across the field. This is an amazing sight in the Tour de France. Riders grabbing their bikes there and trying to get out and across the field as best they can. One or two calling the service. The whole field has collapsed. This is an amazing... And look at this here, too. Two riders trying to fight. <laughs> Well, that's an amazing sight. The rider there trying to get involved in the fight was, in fact, Jesper Skibby. A service required there by, by the Cahia a team from Spain. Pascal Jules. Yeah. And one of the ANC riders here. No, it's not. It's, in fact, uh, Girotti who was taking service. He seems to manage to get into our pictures every day uh, towards the end. Uh, that looked to me, Paul, as though we had Andy Hampson. I don't think it could have been I because... I think it was Jeff Pierce, uh, actually, it was but Jeff I'm Pierce, not sure. That's right, because the field would have waited for him, or at least the 7-Eleven team would have. And now look at the line. The riders who have managed to extricate themselves on that pileup are now having to fight their way back into contention. And it looks to me as though probably 40 or 50 riders were involved in that what I think was a minor crash. I don't think anybody was seriously hurt, but it certainly disrupted the chase now after these five. Well, this is the kind of thing that can happen, Phil, when you've got so many riders, nearly 200 riders still left in the race, all of them trying to get to the front to organise the chase. The, the roads are very, very narrow. Riders will be trying to get inside through the gravel. And at this stage of the game, it only takes one rider to fall in the middle of that bunch when they're doing something like nearly 40 miles an hour for them all to fall down. It will be an advantage for this group in the front here because all the riders who are actually... A, involved in the chase there would sit up for about uh, one or two kilometers to make sure none of the team leaders or none of the tour favorites were involved in that because uh, obviously the Panasonics won't be near the front they'll be making sure that Robert Miller hasn't fallen off the Kaz riders will be making sure that Sean Kelly's okay so this will give this break a possibility to get up to a minute minute and a half lead in possibly only one or two kilometers so for the domestiques of the Tour de France they've been called into action again there just when they thought that their day was done looking after the team leaders now they've got to try and bring them back into the race and make sure their bikes aren't damaged. And, of course, they too themselves aren't damaged because this is the penultimate day for the leaders before they have to come out and show what they're really worth tomorrow in the long time trial. And there goes Peters again. Quickly jumped on there by Dominique Gard. Well, I just feel when that last attack went from Ludo Peters, I did notice that... Uh, Audrey van der Poel was about to let his wheel go and very quickly uh, Dominique Gard moved in there to pull the uh, to pull the gap back straight away. I wonder if uh, Audrey van der Poel was going to try and help him to get away, um, which convinces me even more now that if it does come to a sprint, well, I think we'll see Ludo Peters leading this sprint out from uh, five or six hundred metres. So Armand is on a lone win by Ludo Peters and if all fails, Peters to lead out Adjie van der Poel for the finish. We'll see how that works out. There's already a split being opened up again. Again, it was van der Poel allowing that split to open, uh, giving Ludo Peters a slight advantage, forcing Roberto Amadio to take up third place there and close the gap. All these little spins to close gaps at this stage of the race are beginning to wear on the legs. Don't forget now they've been in the saddle for 159 miles and seven hours and three minutes to boot. A long, long way, the longest stage in the Tour de France. Conditions are extremely hot and we're inside the final two kilometres. So now we'll see what will happen. This is going to be a most tactical finish. They're going to feel a little bit safe from the main field. It hasn't come up to them at all. Theo de Roy anxious to watch and freewheel right at the back here. While at the very front, Dominique Gard wants to get out of that position because he can't see anybody. So he wants somebody to take the lead. Peters rather reluctantly goes up to our left and watches on the right as the four men go through. Theo de Roy, the crafty Dutchman, won't be in his last pace, so he forces the Belgian rider in front of him. And it's going to be the hapless Italian, Amadio, who gets the hot seat where he won't know what's going on. So Amadio leads the line through the trees, and it looks like God is going. No, it's Van der Poel is going. Adrie Van der Poel, and he's been spotted by Amadio, so he sits up. And the line is all together again now, coming into the final mile to the finish. These five riders, now it's a tremendous sprint. They've turned it to the straight now. It's a one